Hello, welcome. Thank you for clicking through to this video on how a carburetor cold starts that doesn't actually have a choke. So it doesn't actually have that choking system. Now, I've based this particular video on the Briggs & Stratton carburetor. Of course, there's many that don't have chokes, but I've had to base it on one to explain my point. And as you can see by the image, it works in conjunction, this particular one, with a primer bulb. OK, so all I'm showing here is the front view of a carburetor and the side view. It's the same carburetor, and of course the side view on the right is a cross-sectional view. So the operator now reaches down and pulls the starter pull cord. And the vacuum then drew in all of this air here into the inlet area of the carburetor. Now it would have come through the air filter of course, which I haven't shown, but it's coming through the inlet here and as it does so, it picks up that fuel there, that's lying at the bottom here, that was injected by the primer bulb. Now this isn't a great lot of fuel of course, and it's not sufficient to keep the engine going of course, because there's only a certain amount, but it's just enough there just to start the engine firing once it gets into the engine. And so the air is continually being drawn in towards the engine then, with that small amount of injected fuel there, to help give an initial start. As this high velocity air passes the top of the main jet here, it caused that vacuum. And that vacuum drew up on all of this fuel. And then when the fuel got to the top of the main jet here, it hit the air and then atomized the fuel. And if you notice there, I've illustrated this fuel coming out here, as smaller particles than this fuel. And there's a good reason for that, because this is the high pressure area. That air has hit that fuel so hard that it's really put that fuel into tiny little molecules, if you like. Whereas this one, this one was injected in and it was lying at the bottom there on the inlet and the air just came through and simply picked it up and took it into the engine. So the reason we initially inject this fuel is to get in the engine first and initially help start the engine. And then when the engine started, it's this fuel that keeps the engine running. And because the piston's still lowering on the induction stroke, it's pulling all that air and fuel in towards the engine. And if you notice there, this butterfly is still closed. So we might wonder why air and fuel would get through past here and go into the engine. Well, this butterfly won't open until the engine's took hold and is running quite fast. So the air and fuel at the moment escapes round the sides of this butterfly because it doesn't shut completely closed, it's just slightly open. And also there's a little hole here on the right hand side, air can also go through there. So the air and fuel mixture that is, goes alongside it and through that little hole. And that's enough to get the engine initially started. And as the engine starts to run then and build up momentum, this butterfly opens, as I said earlier. And when it does, that allows the engine revs to raise. Okay, I hope that's just about explained it. But what I want to do now is just let the animation run so that we can just see before our eyes what's going on there. Okay, thank you for watching. And of course, if you want to review how these carburetors work in full, I've got another video there on YouTube of so many different workings of so many carburetors. I couldn't put that all in this particular video. I've had to shorten it, of course, to get to the point on cold starting without a choke. And if you think someone else you know may benefit from the content of this video, then please do share because it will help me get my content around as well. And it would really help me if you could click the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.